Tavis Maximus here, this time with a quick informational video about stainless steels. Uh, this is just a super basic, you know, introductory. Most people know stainless steels, due to their name, are more corrosion resistant than normal steels. Um, most people don't know is there's actually 250 kinds of stainless steel, and I just have a selection of a few of them. Um, just like normal steels, you can stainless steels come are corrosion resistant, but then come with a huge range of real specific properties depending on how tough you need it, or how you know how much tensile strength you need, or how much uh, fatigue and crack resistance you need, or whether it's certain types of environments, uh, industrial environments um, that you need the metal to survive in, or whether uh, it's high temperature environments. That's one of the things that is nice about stainless steels is you can get stainless steels that um, can work in very high temperature environments, glowing red hot, um, thousand degrees or more continuous temperatures. One common myth I'd like to dispel is that stainless steels are non-magnetic. Uh, depending on their heat treatment abilities, their response to magnetism can change and certain grades or many grades of stainless steel are just as magnetic as any old regular mild steel or any type of, of steel whatsoever. Uh, it's one of the amazing prop properties of anything that contains uh, ferrite or iron is that it's probably one of the most alloyable elements considering that there's just 250 grades of stainless alone. And to kind of demonstrate that fact, most people say, well, you don't... First, they use standard magnets, such as these Allen Co. magnets. These are those grayish um, graphite-colored magnets, and they work pretty well for determining, you know, whether something is or is not magnetic, but it won't tell you, like, subtle differences in levels of magnetism. Both of these pieces of steel feel like they're totally non-magnetic, but that's not entirely true. This is what's known as an N50, I think, um, neodymium magnet. And the N stands for the strength. And this is a high strength. This is like what you'd find in a hard drive. Um, and this is 303 stainless steel. So we can see that maybe a touch, but even with a high strength magnet, uh, there's basically nothing. But on this low carbon 304, the low carbon is to make it uh, more friendly to welding. It's actually just so slightly magnetic, and you can actually feel the difference. The 303, this is a huge cross-section. Remember, magnetism is affected by the cross-section, and this isn't. All this stainless steel is also sitting on a stainless steel table. Uh, it's a food service grade. I'm not exactly sure what they use, and it's mildly magnetic, very slight. Just to talk about the grades of stainless we have, we have 303, which I believe is the very first grade of stainless steel. It doesn't mean that this is really old. It just means that 303 stainless steel was the first stainless steel. And then we have a very common 304 stainless steel. Uh, this is a half inch plate. Um, low carbon for weldability. This would be standard 304 stainless steel. Um, we have some 420 stainless steel. 400 stainless steels are known for having high hardenability and are pretty tough um, and expensive, and they have some certain applications. Um, and this would be one of the highest hardening stainless steels. It can get to Rockwell 50 or more. And it is very magnetic. If it, you didn't know, if you didn't basically have a surface that was exposed and noticed that it didn't rust, you wouldn't even know that was stainless steel. The easiest way to put it for um, some of these is just the fact that, oh, it's, it reacts just like steel, but it's not rusting. We have marine grade 316, and it has a, this is low carbon, whoa, ah. this one is low carbon. And it has enough magnetism for this to stick, but it's barely on there. Where this is a standard, and this, I'm not sure about the heat treatment of this for any of these. 
But this is a standard block of 316. Jeez. I need to hold that a little better. And this is, there is a super tiny amount, but not even anywhere close to enough for the magnet to even hold itself. Much less attract itself like it just did to this piece of 15.5 precipitation hardening stainless steels. This is ex very magnetic, incredibly magnetic. More than the 420 stainless steel. This is super. Uh, besides it not rusting, uh, it's just as magnetic as any other steel. Then we have a piece of 17.4 pH. So precipitation hardening stainless steels are the high grade stainless steels. These steels can run uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 dollars a pound or more. Um, they get pretty expensive. There are a lot of times they're vacuum melted, and they're just really high, uh, known for their use in uh, critical environments such as aircraft, spacecraft, jet engines, that kind of stuff. Seventeen four is the cheapest, basically, and so that's one of the reasons it's the most common. Um, precipitation hardening means a lot of steels you heat up and then you cool them off quickly in water or oil. Precipitation hardening means that. They have to be heated up to a specific temperature and then allowed to bake. That's basically what precipitation hardening is, is you have to bake them in the oven. Some of these have to be baked for 16 hours at a certain temperature and then baked for another 16 hours at a separate temperature. So uh, it's a big deal. Um, so that would be the cheapest. The 15.5 is a little more expensive. It's a little bit more crack and fatigue resistant. Uh, a lot of applications, um, you can swap if you have any application that calls for 17.4, you can basically always swap it for 15.5. But it is not vice versa. If you have an application that calls for 15.5, you cannot use 17.4 because they're probably doing that for the slightly additional toughness. A little more expensive. Then we have 13.8, which is even uh, the next grade up. And it's quite magnetic. But this is a piece of 8th inch sheet. And the magnet holds on to this piece of 15.5 uh, stronger than it holds on to this big old 1.5 by 3.5 uh, 13.8. And then our last piece over here uh, is A286 or known as 16 or 660 stainless steel. Uh, if you were to do it in a pH, I believe it would be a 1626 pH. And it has a very slight amount of magnetism. It would be zero on the Allen Co. But this has about the same amount of magnetism. No, it's a little less than the 304. Jesus. This is a piece of 416. Another 400 series, and you can see it's quite magnetic. The 660 has a slight amount more magnetism than the 316. Um, and so that's one way you can, if you have no idea what grade of stainless steel it is, you can use a magnet. And then with a magnet, um, it will allow you to kind of get an idea. It will allow you to tell you that it's not a 300 series stainless steel, basically. Um, if it's really magnetic, it could be a 400 series stainless steel, or it could be a precipitation hardening stainless steel. So I'll have to dispel that myth because it's just all over the map. As far as what these are used for, I think I mentioned earlier the 400 series, more heavy duty use. 300, you know, 404 would be common for food service. So this table is either 304 or 404. A little more toughness. Um, what even though the 300 series, they're cheap, they're not very strong. Um, what is surprising is that these pieces of precipitation hardening or these 400 series stainless steels can be three or four times stronger than any of the 300 series. And you should remember that as there's vast strength differences between the grades of stainless steel. No grade of stainless steel actually gets quite as high as carbon steel. Um, they call it... Uh, uh, you know tensile strength and they measure it in KSI and some of these stainless steels can hit 200,000 or more where you can hit nearly 300,000 on the very top grade of steels that do rust basically 
So stainless steels ult. So with stainless steels, you're ultimately trading corrosion resistance uh, for ultimate strength. One thing of note, though, is when you start adding huge amounts of nickel and chrome, like such as this, what's known as ink alloy, 660 or A286, um, is when you have uh, this piece of metal that is 16% chrome and 26% nickel. So almost, you know, 40% of this, <laughs> more than 40% of this, going on the way to half of this piece of metal is nothing but chrome and nickel. Uh, which means that, yeah, some stainless steels can really take a lot of heat. Um, not just corrosion resistance in any kind of industrial environment. With all those grades, you can, any kind of, you know, petroleum processing to food manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, uh, stainless steels everywhere. And uh, the heat resistance of some of these grades can be incredible, uh, depending on the strength properties. Uh, a grade like this 13.8, you know, it could run at full strength all day long at 500 degrees. Uh, where this A286 could remain at or very close to full strength uh, at 1,000 degrees. So it's pretty amazing to think that this piece of metal could be 1,000 degrees and still basic and still be almost as strong as it, as it is at room temperature. And that's a very unique property. So you can make things out of stainless steel. Uh, afterburner shrouds, jet engine parts, all that kind of stuff where it needs to take a high oxidization environment and uh, have high strength. Um, this 660 stainless steel can take, uh, remain stainless or rust resistant, oxidization resistant intermittently up to well above, you know, 15, 16, 1700 degrees. Um, just to give you an idea. And yes, these blocks of metal are pretty heavy. Just as a side note, um, steel on average, any steel, regular or not, weighs three times as much for a given amount, three times as dense as the densest rock. This piece of steel weighs three times as much as the densest granite you'll find in the same, same size. So please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Um, Catus Maximus out.